Welcome back to the show, Stan Tatkin. It's good to see both of you. It really is. It really is. You're lovely. Oh, it's good to see you too, Stan. And yeah. I'm really excited to get to dive into your new book, In Each Other's Care. I got it right here. Which I, of course, been pouring over and have lots I want to ask you about. And yeah, yeah, just thank you for being here and for sharing your knowledge with our audience. Thank you both for having me. Yeah, yeah you. it's you're, you've had a massive impact on our relationship, and I know relationships worldwide. Uh, oh yeah, we have in our relationship school. We have Wired for Love as one of the required readings for our students. So, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. thank you. I love. Yeah. I, I I told you before we were recording how much I appreciate what you're doing uh, with the relationship school. Cool. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. And yeah. you know, it's as you said that. Uh, before we started, I was thinking about how your book is, it's different than your other books. Yeah. And I really, I want to kind of unpack that because I think that I'm just watching you over time and, you know, training with you over time, just seeing how your model is evolving and, and also getting kind of, it's, you're kind of fo honing in on some things that I think for yeah. you are becoming less and less negotiable when you work with couples or help couples it seems like i think i think it was because this was a um this was written during the pandemic mm. and and i went through a lot of changes as i'm sure the two of you did and a lot of people did but particularly clinicians working with couples um i found myself getting more and more frustrated and uh and that it's it seemed important to really be clear aside from the science aside from the other stuff i got into with um, the other books yeah. that you know what what do people really need to know at this point and what do people need to focus on in terms of what can crash and burn in any relationship and so that's why i did it this way also because it was more fun to do it this way too yeah to just um, kind of come from a different angle yeah to break it down into complaints yeah and to have have a system uh a structure uh where i could you know again and again and again repeat a theme well and, and you talk yeah and you say that in the book somewhere i mean the introduction alone i i think is life-changing like i'm like those first 20 pages if someone just read that i feel like it would change their life it's and you, so there's something you did there that really distilled down what i see as very high leverage ways of thinking about relationship approaching relationship uh, it, so that it can be sustainable and good for both people over time and anyway i just was really impacted by that just the introduction alone i was highlighting so much and i think that um yeah as you got into the you know and the complaints are so um yeah, you have a way of unpacking those and and the repeating. Yeah, that's what you said. You said something about like, you're going to see repetition here, but we need the repetition. That's how you, mm -hmm. you said something about learning, you know, is it vertical learning? Yeah. Yeah. Can you explain that? Like why we need to hear these these kinds of concepts over and over? So horizontal learning is basically learning the states of the union and the multiplication tables. And, uh, you know, that that is you learn it and that's about it um vertical learning is when we are learning what we already know in some way mm. um therapy is vertical learning it is repetition 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 until something clicks until we uh, you know we're able to make associations to what we already do know and what we do know begins to become more complex so i know this i've always known it but my understanding of it seems to have deepened because uh because of the repetition i'm beginning to understand this more than i ever did that's vertical learning and that's when we're teaching uh, a theory or a complex polytheoretical approach like pack it really takes a long time uh, it, <laughs> and it's quite frustrating because people want to learn things now, but it takes time and repetition in order to grok it. The same with love relationships, the same with knowing oneself and knowing another person. 
uh, all of it is is really vertical learning. Yeah, I feel like I I uh, still have a lot of work to do on the vertical learning about her around like empathy. <laughs> I, I took a very horizontal learning approach with empathy early on, and it, I just love that vertical learning. Like, there's so much yeah. deeper I can continue to understand here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and that that is the beauty of of therapy. A therapist should really explain that. Um, that is repetition, repetition, and that's a good thing. It's a yeah. good thing. Yeah, uh, yeah. Clients are always like, it "Sorry, I'm, yeah." Clients are like, "I'm sorry, I'm talking about this again," or we're having the same thing, and I'm, and we expect it. We know we're yeah. like, we're right. We're still, we're still honing in. We're circling in on something, and it's going to take a while. And I just find that too, as as someone training with you, I've, I just want to keep reading. Like, I get excited for your next book because I'm like, I just, I need to keep hearing it. I need to keep marinating. It continues to go deeper. I learn it better. And I, I'm just impressed with how something that's, you know, relationships, such an embedded part of our life is is so removed from real understanding about humans, yeah. you know, and, and so this, I think what PACT has done is really helped me understand human beings better and then therefore my relationships better. The, um, the book really is hopefully leveling the field about, about our species. <laughs> yeah. You know, we're, we're, we're so, um, uh, accustomed to labeling, categorizing uh, pathology because we're in in that field on medicine and psychology, psychiatry of trying to figure out what it is we're looking at and how do we treat it. Yeah, but um, but the human condition isn't treatable. Um, it's it, it it has to be reined in by by the idea of civilization of of rules and. Uh, in principles, otherwise, we do what we've always done. Um, we steal, we rob, we rape, we uh, kill, we you know, do all sorts of terrible things um, because of our nature. So there's that. But also that the couple is the only type of union that doesn't operate under other rules of, of unionizing, right? Um, uh, we get together because of love, because of, you know, certain expectations, fantasies we've grown up with. We get together for a lot of different reasons and forget the, you know, to think about the main things that will sustain yeah. us. Purpose, vision, yeah. what, you know, how are we going to govern each other? How are we going to limit and, and, and push each other to get things done? How are we going to protect each other from each other? Yeah. And, and are we even on the same page with big things? And so, yeah. it's astounding to me, and probably, to, I'm sure to you too, mm -hmm. how it's a different animal operating under different expectations with entitlements uh, going all the way back to early family, early family life. Mm -hmm. um, and so, we get a lot of people who actually don't have a structure. They never cope co-constructed anything um they're living in a house that's you know uh, metaphorically that has not finished being built it's not even it's it looks weird yeah uh, and it's going to come crashing down as soon as there's a big storm yeah so yeah yeah, uh, yeah. You, you've moved uh, it seems like in my familiarity with your work into how important this is the vision the purpose the agreements the container yes um can you talk a little bit about how to get a couple or get someone listening oriented in that direction because we were we are baffled when we work with people that they have no nothing they have their nothing. vows and like that's all they got and they don't even remember them they probably right. got yeah. it off the internet <laughs> yeah um it it you know I, i'm learning too i mean er, you know the, er, everything i'm doing is learning because i'm applying it to my life and I know how hard it is to do everything in the book. That's hard. It's hard to do. Yeah. Um, it's still the best thing to do, but it's hard. To do. So, uh, in, in, in conveying this to couples in the beginning, I was not very good because I had an idea of, of what this should be. And yet I didn't know how to teach it and know how to convey it. And so I kept throwing people into the deep end and then getting frustrated with them because I had already integrated more than they understood. And so, why don't you understand? Um, and I found that the the best way to do it. Um, this is for this is for the therapists out there. Uh, a couple therapists is 
uh, is the idea of, of building containers as a therapist, as a couple therapist. And, and this is something that I've always been trying to articulate, but never found an image, a way to do it, of how the therapist can change hats and be a therapist, be a physician, be a lawyer, be a coach, be an investigator, right? How to do that. So containers basically uh, is a task given to the couple. Uh, you know, uh, come up with a solution to this problem in 10 minutes uh, to where you both are good for now, right? So that puts a stressor on the couple. In the stress, we are able to see the couple leaking. They're going to show what they can and cannot do because the this, this stress is really what we need. Uh, otherwise, we can't, we can't help them right mm -hmm. so it gives them a task it gives us a purpose the purpose could be we want to prove something we want to uh we want to show them something we want to test them to see how good they are or how much they're improving um or we're trying to set them up for something else uh strategically so we have different you know uh, may have a different purpose and perhaps a role that we're going to play so folks right now i, I i'm going to play coach and uh, I'd like you to uh, to deal with this problem again. And with your permission, I'd like to keep stepping in and uh, calling things out uh, to guide you as a coach. Right? This is we're now in training. We're now doing a workshop mm -hmm. on how on how to get the things done. Or how to make an done. agreement. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so so it allows me to change my voice. It allows me to to be something different than a therapist, which can also provide me a way of saying things. As a therapist, I wouldn't be able to say because I'm playing a different role. And so it's good for them. It's good for me. And, uh, and it allows me to organize every session to see the progress and see what, what is happening and whether they're moving or not. Mm -hmm. So that's how I introduce it. I don't say it as I have, which is a grand idea, secure functioning, grand idea. But like you said, you know, like, okay, uh, how do you do that? <laughs> um, so I build it with these containers and I use what's in front of me to make a point. Uh, do you guys have a, a policy about who, who folds the clothes? Because you're fighting about it and it sounds like you fight all the time. Have you made a policy? No, we never did. Oh, wouldn't it be easier if you just came, if you, if you put your legislators hats on and create legislation i mean that would solve that problem no yeah yeah i didn't think about that okay uh -huh. let's see you do it right now mm -hmm. right and, and then you're, and of course you're they won't be able to do it yeah yeah they won't because i think that's that but because they haven't done it because i'm flipping to a quote you have just about secure functioning because there's this under i, I like what you're speaking to because i I've, I've done that with couples it's so effective in helping them see what they can and can't do, what they yeah. don't, what they haven't thought about. And then you're seeing or which, them like, oh, or which you're not. They or which they believe they shouldn't have to do or the, in, right. in my entitlement as a partner. I'd yeah. like you to do it, but why should I? But why should I have to? Okay. And again, it's like, okay, they're not thinking about not only their own interests, their partners and their relationships over the long term. And that I think it seems like that's a big part of secure functioning. And you, you actually have a definition in your book that I think it it really I don't know if it's a new definition or like a more maybe you just keep refining the way you're saying it but secure functioning is a social contract between two individuals of equal power and authority to remain fair just and sensitive at all times while also remaining fully collaborative and cooperative right it's a team sport it's not a solo sport yeah yeah and people you know, under stress, I think that's what we see, you know, people come in and they're, they're squaring off. They think the partner's the problem. They're not realizing actually it's the way we've co-created, you know, with yeah. no intention, this whole relationship and how we do things. And then I feel like your book is really, really highlighting that. And it's like with every, with every complaint and the way you work out the solution, it's like, Here's how you would do it in a way that's incorporating all the secure functioning principles. And um, here's what it sounds like. Here's what it looks like. Here's why you need to. Uh, it's just it's just cool how you did that. And over and over, you, you did it without also going deep into attachment I didn't, yeah. or neuroscience. Yeah. There's some in the beginning, but it's yeah. it's like 
it's just enough light touch it's a light touch mm -hmm. because i figured it mucks up the, it's still important and yeah, I still work it that way, and, and it's uh, you know I haven't dropped it, but it yeah. mucks up the message. Yeah, um, and it kind of gives people license. You know, when people are able to categorize each other, this is a uh, this has bothered me. Um, we need to categorize in order to organize the world and organize our experience and organize. If we're in science, we have to organize what it is we're trying to observe and what it means. Right, we can't do it any other way. But that need to uh, to categorize is also a cudgel that we use to beat each other up with. So, oh, you're a narcissist. I just read about it. You must be. Um, you're a codependent. It sounds like you're borderline because codependents are borderline. Um, you're autistic. I mean, it, it never stops. Um, the uh, the the use of of terminology and ideas that were never meant to be uh, uh, a bat to hit another person over the head with is, of course, used that way. So right. I thought I'd take that away and say. You know what? If you're a human primate, you too are an asshole. So yeah. get over it. Um, there is no way you're not. You may think you're not, but that's dangerous if you think you're not because you are and you will be and everyone is. So what? Um, right? Uh, yeah. We're angels and devils. And yeah. here's how we are. And we've been this way throughout humankind. Undeniable. It's right there. Read about it. Study history. Watch the news. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. And yeah. so it, so to flatten that and to mm -hmm. get people to understand we have a problem being human vis-a-vis yeah. -vis a, a staying together as an alliance. We have a country now that's tribalized and fragmented because we've lost a shared purpose, yeah. a shared, uh, a shared meaning, a shared vision. In some ways, we never really had it because all people being equal is bullshit. Mm -hmm. Um, but we, but at least we could fantasize that that was true. Mm -hmm. uh, the same thing with a couple. If a couple does not have, is not organized, and getting each other on board, deal or no deal. Um, what am I getting out of this? What what will happen if this happens? Um, you know, how do we protect each other from each other? What if we change? What if you suddenly are attracted to another person? What do we do? Right? Uh, because people aren't aren't working together to constantly mold and shape this thing called a relationship they just let things happen automatically and automatically we know will be memory driven and we'll do exactly what we saw and experienced in our own childhood nothing better so uh so uh, th this is you know um people have to up uh up their level and raise the bar of what they're trying to aspire to or will do what the awful factory line human primate will do, which is great. Yo, yo, as you know, I've dedicated my life to helping people with their relationships, right? I want to solve this problem so that all of you can work through your differences and have fulfilling, amazing, badass partnerships and relationships, family, coworkers, friends, whoever. And I have trained a ton of relationship coaches, almost a hundred certified relationship coaches to help you specifically work through your relationship challenges. So I want to invite you to a special deal we're offering to the podcast listener where you can get 50% off your first month of coaching with one of our amazing relationship coaches. Okay. If you're tired of therapy, it feels like that's going around in circle or you want to actually set goals and accomplish your relationship goals hire a relationship coach. Okay, go to relationshipschool.com forward slash get coaching now, and then use the coupon code first 50 to get the 50% deal off your first month of relationship coaching. Super psyched to have our amazing coaches serve you and help you get to the next level. Yeah, and you're, you're putting, um, again, I, I love this, and I, I've also learned this from you, probably through you, just the getting people to do the thing okay, yeah. do it right now. <laughs> Let's do it right now. Just practice that. And we, we have our coaches do that as well. Like getting clients to get out of the heady intellectual understanding or wanting to talk about it. And like, let's just, let's do it. Cause you need to learn this. And the only way to learn it is by doing it. Jason, I, I'm currently doing an updated wired for love. And I, I wrote a section called um, stop it or do it. 
And I'm not sure the editors are going to let me get away with it. I'm not sure I want to get away with it, but it's just stop it or do it. And I, it just imagine your relationship where you could, you could push each other and limit each other in your daily, in your daily management, right? Your daily going, yeah. you know, because it's really a matter of stop it or do it. Right. And imagine that you could just say that to each other and not because it feels good, but because it works. And, and if my wife says, stop it, I go, okay. I may just do this a little bit um, and she may go back and do that. That's fine. It's in play. It's in, you know, but uh, I'll do it. Uh -huh. um, stop it. Okay. Uh, and imagine we were able to do that. Wouldn't our relationship be easier and less energy expending? Yes, it would be because uh -huh. we would have to give each other permission to do that. We're grownups. We're not little right. kids. You're not my mother. I'm not your dad, but we give each other the permission to say that to each other with the that's the collaboration part we're collaborating by yeah that's a good idea that would save us time and, yeah. and we could get a lot done yeah and the cooperation part is okay you know got me used to yeah. say that yeah okay uh, uh <laughs> yeah cooperation it wouldn't be cool if it was that easy it's it simple but we do that tracy and i do that yeah that's amazing yeah, yeah. no it She's can be a hand on my back and pushing me and saying no oh, hold on and i'm doing that with her and she goes no stop yeah don't all right yeah and, and we get it and we actually get a lot done yeah. I mean, it's like, why is that okay on a sports team or a, in a band or right, or right. dancers, but it's like not okay in a relationship, you know? Right. Right. Yeah. And it is okay. I like what you're saying. Like we've set it up because it's, I'm guessing for you, Stan, like her, the things she's saying, stop it to are things you don't want to keep doing anyway. No, you don't. No. You're like, yeah, it I'm, I'm up for, for sure. you don't like, you know, Tracy doesn't like it. And you're not, you don't need to hold on to it. And so when it happens, if it interrupts with our teamwork and our discourse yes. and causes us to go off road into a fight that loops again and again, no, we don't totally. want that. But okay. But I want to be the voice of um, the devil's advocate here. <laughs> sure. Please. Uh, I'm the entitled client here going, yeah, but man, sometimes you got to just talk it out. And like, I need to know this is about my mom and I, I need to talk about my trigger and um, where this comes from. And, Great, let's do it. But first, I want to make sure you guys can work as a team because if you can't, you're not going to make it. Yeah, yeah. And that's what I worry about. Yeah, I don't worry about where this comes from yet. I worry that the two of you are behaving in a way that cannot be sustainable. Right, right. Yeah. It's so much like they have to be. They have to really show you or show each other that they're in each other's care, yeah. and then then you can start to be interested and curious about where things came from or hold space for that or connect deeper. But, yes. but it's like, there's, they've got to feel, I mean, I really feel like it's what you're saying is like, they've, this behavioral piece is really strong in this book around, you've got to yeah. be able to do these things that convey safety more yeah. like, like speak to the nervous system, speak to the human animal that this is how humans can get along. We, we've, like you said, history shows yeah. us every, you know, we have tons of information to show us how humans work together well and how they don't. If you do these things, you're going to feel better. You're going to feel more like a team, like you're in each other's care. And then, and then there's like, there's possibility for healing or for more yeah. growth and development. Although there's a lot of growth and development and being able to do something or stop doing something. I tell people what we're doing right now is not personal. It's tactical. Yeah. It's tactical. Everything's tactical. Yeah. It's not about you. It's not about her. It's not about him. It's not about me. It's not about anybody. Everyone here uh, uh, is going to do the same thing that the two of you are doing if they didn't know better. What I'm talking about is purely tactical. Mm -hmm. uh, and here's the other part, the science that is threat and the biology behind uh, chronic stress. We know that chronic stress is a killer. Chronic stress leads to an early death, uh, uh, you know, wear and tear on cardiovascular and infl inflammatory, uh, 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 autoimmune systems. Uh, and, and we can lower it in the relationship. We must lower it in the relationship because that's home. If the relationship is insecure functioning, it has high interpersonal stress and that has consequences right in all sorts of areas mm -hmm. so we're really trying to lower interpersonal stress at home home being the couple system yeah and eliminate um or eradicate threat so that it doesn't become a, a memory system that 
accrues and grows to the point where people cannot even be in the same room with each other. Right. Right. Because that's really hard if, to get out of if, if you even can. Really hard to get out of. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 do you people, uh, I find some of the hardest cases actually, uh, with people that have been married 30 years and have done things so horribly without any repair yeah. Yeah. that they, that they cannot think about forward. Yeah. They're constantly trying to get their justice, yes. even though their, their version of justice would cause an injustice yes. in the other person. Totally. Yeah. Men lose. Yeah. Totally. It's, uh, yeah, you said something in your book about that too. Like, Maybe it was doesn't mean to been somewhere else, but that those that's the hardest couple. It's not personality disorders or all no. this other stuff that is you know, people are labeling right now. It's it's really just years and years of resentment and and behaving very poorly. Yeah. yeah. It's like it's like, hey, dude, you shot up my town and killed every everybody uh in my family, and you expect me to think about the future with you? <laughs> I want you dead. Yeah. And don't you come near me. Um, even though I need you and you need me. Uh, you know, now we have the attachment system, which says I can't quit you, right? Right, because uh, of nature's glue, which we confuse for love. It isn't. Mm -hmm. It's a survival issue. So I need you, but I can't live with you. Yeah, right? because you're too dangerous, and that goes in both directions. Yeah. Um, and yet we know that people have gotten out of this since the beginning of time, when they've had to. Yeah. When they've had to. Mm -hmm. People will get out of this um, because their lives depend on it. Right. How do we convey that to a couple that knows that intellectually, but as soon as they're in the room, I want my justice. Yeah. It, it, and I don't trust like that, you. With a couple like that, Stan, um, I'm thinking of someone I worked with last year. Yeah, close to 30 years of just deep resentment, not one yeah. successful repair. Um, I feel like sometimes it's like, yeah, maybe you guys should just be done because the the water the pile is so massive. Your skills are so um, basic, and you can't you just can't seem to do it. You don't seem that motivated. You'd rather go. Yeah, you shot up my town, and I I just I don't. That's the only thing I want to talk about. I mean, is that is a couple like that even workable for you? Well, I, yes, yes. What's, um, the, what's the pathway there? Um, th something what you did. Uh, I'll use as a, as a strategic way so i've told couples and i've been i've been really honest about it when i've seen couples uh where they a second uh, a, a, a minute they'll say it can't go by without them fighting because as soon as you open your mouth i know you're lying kind of thing mm -hmm. um there's no space right then i'll say you know i i do want to be honest with you i've seen cases like this where the biological threat has built up uh, uh for so many years um, that that people are doing the best they can. They actually cannot get out of this without without uh, a drug intervention of some kind uh, because it's a, it's a nervous system thing, right? It's a it's a it's a threat system, a survival instinct, right? So so I wouldn't get your hopes up. I I don't have a lot of hope. My prognosis is poor because of this. So I've been honest with people, mm. and I expect them. You know, they get depressed when I tell them this. But then they come back and they try harder. Mm. Uh -huh. So it has this kind of, yeah, right. you know, reverse yeah. effect. But then I'll also, with some couples, I'll just say, you know what? Do it. I want you to go to them right now. Get on your knees. Tell them how sorry you are and make them believe it now. So I, I, I've come to um, allow myself that voice uh, if necessary. Mm -hmm. If I get fired or fired, you know, it's no big deal. But um, but doing something uh, um, changes everything. Yeah. yeah. I, in my head, I have it all worked out. Oh, if I do that, you'll do this, and I won't do it. So, so no, do it now. Do it. Um, so I'll just tell people to do it. Yeah. And then they find out. Yeah. yeah. For themselves. Yeah. 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 Can I do it? Yeah. So the, so the therapist, you know, has to put that voice on. Yeah. Uh, at times. Uh, yeah, because you know, there's, it's like that would be their last resort is like to do something in good faith for once. Yeah. <laughs> and, and if you, if that can happen and that, that could start to thaw this thing out, it could, you know? Yeah. You yeah. never know. Um, you know, uh, you, you can leave here afterwards, but shut up and do it. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Can yeah. I do it? So that's another thing you can pull up. Out. <laughs> I yeah. love it. Uh, yeah. I, I appreciate, Stan, how you work with just the the sort of inherent dependency that we have yeah. as human beings, that we are inherently dependent on each other. And I think that that, you know, it continues to be really tricky for people to figure out, well, where does that line stop and how much should I want or need? And when is it too much? And, you mm -hmm. know, there's, it gets people almost overcomplicate it. And, and I really appreciate your, and, and because it was complicated as kids for a lot of us. Uh, but I think that, Again, it's always refreshing to for me to just keep reading how really um, how much you work with that tendency and that that's normal and natural and and therefore we have a responsibility to again to care for each other and ourselves in a good way. We're pack animals. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're not we're not hyenas or what's the other uh, cat uh, wildcat that is not uh, it goes alone goes oh, alone maybe even jaguars. they sometimes yeah maybe. jaguars yeah but even they. Will hang from trees. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. true. So, so you know, I think people should uh, should just uh, uh, not overthink it. It's not an intellectual argument. It's just yeah. a fact. Uh, and so, uh, so interdependency is we're both dependent for the same things, mm -hmm. and we make sure we are. So you and I have the same things to gain and the same things to lose. Therefore, we hold each other to account the same account. Mm -hmm. codependency yeah. is one direction only yeah. i don't hold you to the same thing i hope you'll do what i'm doing for you because that's what i'm doing i'm putting money in the kitty in hopes it'll pay out it never does which is why i'm so angry all the time right so this is a union of equals uh it's uh, based on terms and conditions and we hold each other to the same fire yeah mm -hmm. uh that's how we express our dependency right um so I say, be as needy as you want, just make sure the other person can be as well. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's, it, again, it's a social contract or a set of social contracts um, that let's do this. Um, and since we're both doing it, it's a burden for both of us, but we also get the benefits of it. Right. Yeah. Huge benefits. Yeah. Hey, y'all. I hope you have ordered my new book by now, Getting to Zero, How to Work Through Conflict in Your High Stakes Relationships. It's already getting dozens of five-star reviews on Amazon. I've heard from a lot of you. Thank you for buying the book, buying it on Audible, buying it on Kindle. Uh, I really appreciate it. really appreciate the support. I think this book is going to help a lot of people. It's all about how do we get back to a good place after some kind of disconnection or rupture or conflict. That's what the entire book is at, about. And if you want a roadmap on how to get back to a good place, what I call zero, um, please order my book. Getting to zero book.com gets you some extra goodies, a conflict quiz, some additional PDFs, etc. And uh, you can order it in all the places and support your local bookstores. Cool. Thanks. Back to the show. <laughs> I want to ask you kind of the most basic question because you've grown and evolved here and you've gotten this question probably thousands of times and I got it today actually in one of my classes. Um, and just given how your work's evolved, I'm just curious how you'd answer it now, which is okay. And I'm thinking of a listener here. So listener, put your, yeah. put yourself in my shoes here. Um, my partner, you know, I'm, I tend to avoid and shut down and withdraw and I need space and my partner wants to talk about it and they need to talk about it and they are not okay with me taking space. And then they're in this tit for tat, win, lose, like, well, I'll do that for you, but then I lose, I'll, I'll give you space, but then I have to abandon myself. You know, this kind of really common dynamic. I'm curious how you would advise a listener that's stuck in that. I, you know, you can think of this as being able to cross the aisle, right? <laughs> to bridge across the aisle, left and right. You could think of this as uh, cats and dogs. Why do they get along? Mm -hmm. uh, you can think of this as on um, uh, where actually do we agree and where are we the same rather than focus on low hanging fruit where we are different. We love to do that. Where mm -hmm. we're different and where we disagree. That's not. Uh, that's not a high level 
of social emotional intelligence. A higher level of social emotional intelligence is being able to create consensus. You want this. We both want to feel relief, right? I feel relief by getting out of dodge. You feel relief by talking things through. How can we, how can we meet in the middle here during those moments? Cause it's a state dependent, yeah. dependent need, mm -hmm. right? Totally. Based on threat. I'm feeling threat. I need to get away and calm and soothe myself. You need to engage in order to calm and soothe yourself. Okay. Fine. Um, how about when I need to get away, you come in with me or I'll stay and we just don't talk. But I'll stay with you and let's just get involved in parallel play in a, in a way that doesn't, that frees us from any expectation or demand until we recover. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's a recovery issue there. I can right. only recover being alone. Why? Because being with you, uh, I feel too much interpersonal stress and an obligation inside my head or a demand from you, an expectation, which is why I want to leave. Yeah. You don't want to feel abandoned. And when I go away, it activates abandonment stress for you. Understandable, which makes you feel worse. So it probably does for me too, because even though I get away from you, I'm still triggering an abandonment stress in me, which we could prove with a urinalysis test. And right. blood. Right. We could prove it, mm -hmm. uh, but I'm not aware of it. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so let's, let's recover together and make the conditions such we can both live in until until we actually recover and then maybe we can you can do what you would like to do or maybe we can actually think about how to fix this thing so it doesn't happen again yeah because people mistakenly think that this is a deeper issue when most of the time it is not i promise you it is not a deeper issue yeah not yeah, it's so true because people go into well, you don't really love me, you don't really care about me, or you don't, me. you don't really want me to be myself here. You don't really, you want to control me and micromanage it. Like they make it into something. That's a personal narrative. Yes, a personal narrative is is how I justify my pain. My pain is always justified as it's you. Yeah, it's you, and I can prove it, right? Because I've oriented the data to fit my narrative, which protects my interest zone. All of us do that. Yeah. All of us do that. Yeah. So rather than get into that, let's fix this thing like a postmortem. Uh, do a postmortem at the hospital. The doctor's going, so you did this. You should go to jail. No, they, they lay out the problem. They don't work on each other. They work the problem. How can we better not make this mistake in the future? That's better science. That's a better treatment. Yeah. Right. Help us not do that. No. Let's stop this from happening again. How about yeah. we do this? So that would that would be better, easier, and more on the nose. Mm -hmm. Then I think this is a deeper issue. I think you hate me because your father did it. So true. <laughs> now that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting, but it doesn't solve any problem. It actually makes it worse because now I gotta sit through your reasoning why you treat me like a dick. Yeah. yeah just don't do it stop it you know um so we mistake these things because of our you know our over um you know um therapizing yeah uh, and what we read today and everything is just yeah. so it's crazy it's like the psychology tools start to work against us yes right uh occam yes. occam Occam's razor is just completely ignored. You know, it's like, what's right in front of you? What's the most obvious thing? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think people too, who've done individual therapy that is more like introspective and like, let's look, let's like try to piece things together, which is a valuable process for personal growth. When we're calm, when we're, when we're smoking calm. pot. Exactly. Yeah, and then they come to it. couples and it's like, no, we gotta, we gotta do things right now to make each other feel relief like if we just want that like you got to feel relieved and like you're in each other's care right if we just focused on that that mm -hmm. people can't just entertain their narratives about why mm -hmm. because it's so it's so insensitive and can it doesn't it doesn't move the needle you could do spend a whole session doing that and they go home and they do keep repeating the same thing so i think that 
like, I just, what I'm hearing you say is like when you're working, you know, couples therapy can look quite different than individual because yeah, yes, you can really is. work on the things that are happening day in and day out that don't work for them. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think, I think in couple therapy, we have to be careful not to, uh, to, to look at the house burning down and what are they doing right now uh, that's burning the house down. We have to first stop the bleeding, mixing metaphors here. Yeah. Uh, stop the fire, put out the fire. Yeah. Uh, before we can start to take a look at, yeah. uh, uh, at you know, how these things keep happening. Um, otherwise, we lose the patient, the patient dies. Um, and yeah. so, uh, and so getting people to orient themselves to a two person psychological system of we and us that like a potato sack race, we can't go anywhere without working together. We'll mm -hmm. fall, we'll stand still, we'll pull against <coughs> each other, but we will not make it to the finish line. Mm -hmm. That's the fact. And so that's a fact. And so how are we going to how are we going to do business? How are we going to not change each other? It's about yeah. how we're going to do business. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the manner in which we interact. It's not who we are. It's the manner in which we interact when one or both of us is under stress is too uh, pro-self and yeah. not pro-relationship. And if it's pro-self, it forces, compels the other person to respond also in a pro-self manner. And that's where people square off. Yeah. And they just don't understand yeah. that, that they're doing that. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I was with a couple yesterday and we were just trying to get some agreements to stop the bleeding. I was like, this we're not even getting to like the stuff about what you want to create and what you would love to share together. We're just trying to stop damage from happening every day. Yeah. And, you know, we came up with two things. I, I hope they're applying it, but it's it's like sometimes that's starting to put a stop, you know, get some traction somewhere so that then they can look at each other and have a little hope, I guess, a little set like, up, oh, you're, set, not, you're not so bad. Set up a container each session to see, uh, to have them prove it to you whether they're doing it or not. Yes, that's good. I'm going to take that with me. A little supervision. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. And the often the anxious partner that you call the wave, um, anxious ambivalent, um, thinks they're pro relationship. Right. <laughs> and it's like, no, you're actually pro self. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah. Yeah. They're more so pro relationship. <laughs> they're more pro relationship than the island. Yeah. But they're, but, but they're just as self centered and self oriented uh, when it comes to uh, stressful issues. Yeah. Um, as the other. And that's what yeah. they don't understand. Yeah. 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 Both looking for stress relief. Yeah. Yeah. At least, so. at least a wavish person is is looking to the relationship to make it better and somehow so you, it's good to have at least one of those people around it really really helps <laughs> for, for your entertainment I guess. for your entertainment or for no, just but like for, I, for I, kind of kind of alerting the system to like wait we're doing something relationally that doesn't mm -hmm. probably isn't working right. i was i was a car carrying island for most of my life and and through my own development i became much more wavish yeah because theoretically wave is you know, is the next step. It's the next step and that to secure. <laughs> yeah. And maybe we just ask that too, because people always ask us that too. Like, are we, are our attachment styles changing over time? Do we have to worry about that? And, you know, because people have labeled themselves and they label their partners and then they're like, I want to get, you know, become more secure. And, you know, I think I know what you would say there, but I'm, I'm curious for the listener. Development can never move forward if uh, if resources are being drained off um, by survival issues. Mm -hmm. uh, if you and I are insecure functioning and we're uh, and we're there's too much interpersonal stress, development takes a lot of resources, and so we cannot possibly develop if we're fighting for our lives and we feel that it's a war zone or something like it. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so secure functioning is the only system structure I can think of that would provide the, um, the structure of the limits that reduces threat and interpersonal stress that allows to free up resources. That's what I, that's what I experienced in my marriage with Trace. Mm -hmm. Um, neither of us, both of us became the most productive, uh, when we got together. 
yeah. uh, and continue to be. Um, and we believe it's because of our, our ability to operate as secure functioning partners. Mm -hmm. um, whereas I never experienced that before. I was, I was in relationships where I, I felt threat. Not because the other person was a bad person. They felt threat for me too. Um, so this, the safety and security system has to be locked and, and, and solidly in place where people absolutely are diehard protectors of that system, no matter what. Because if that is in play, meaning I don't fully trust you, I don't feel safe and secure at all times because you don't, you don't pick up on it and, and short up for me and I don't do it for you. If that isn't in place, resources are being misused. Yeah. And so we don't move. We consolidate where we are. And then you reinforce my early memory of what happens when I depend on somebody. Because my behavior compels you to do this. You reinforce why I need to keep my defenses up. Right. Yeah. And so the beat goes on. Yeah. And so you're saying that by practicing and really, really living secure functioning and all the principles you've outlined in all your books around that, that frees up development. So someone could actually develop into a more secure, securely attached person in the world. Um, it will happen. And it will happen. Yeah, I love yeah. that, but it will even happen. Mary, even Mary Main said, I'm not sure how she got her data. Mary Main, yeah. uh, uh, you know, uh, one of the people that developed the uh, adult attachment interview. Uh, believe that within five years, uh, uh, a couple where there's one secure will pull the other one into security. Mm -hmm. It's also the other way is true too. Yeah. If the insecure partner is dominant, they can pull the secure one into insecure. Yeah. So it can go either way. Okay. I've seen that. But secure functioning is the only way I know uh, to, uh, there's no other way I can think of to get out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, if you want to uplevel your life, your relationship life specifically, I want you to consider our Relationship Mastery program. It's nine months of complete transformation where you become a better listener, a better communicator, you learn how to have secure relationships, and you get an experiential taste of that. You feel seen and supported and challenged to reach your relationship goals. And really, you become a better communicator. So many, many people have gone through this course now. And we have a done with you version of it now, which is amazing, where you get assigned a private relationship coach. You get to do live group coaching with me once a month and ask me anything you want. There's office hours where you get to meet with one of our coaches to nerd out on the curriculum. And the community is very strong. And these are people who care a lot about relationships and they want to get what they want to get, which is they want to be in a relationship and not betray themselves, right? They want to get the relationship they want while being true to themselves. That's what most of us want. And this course is the path for you to get that. Here's what one of our participants in the past has said about this course. What I would say to people that have been listening to the podcast but aren't ready to take that final step into joining the course, um, the most powerful thing has been like the partner calls. The accountability um, is something that you're not going to get by just listening to podcasts on your own because I thought the same thing like, oh, I'm getting a lot out of just listening to these podcasts and I'm, you know, mm -hmm. been in therapy. I've, you know, done this and that. Um, to take that deeper dive and the commitment there's something about just the financial commitment, the time and the energy that you put into it. What you put in is what you're going to get out of it. And so, again, if, you know, invest in yourself. All right. Amazing words from one of our heartfelt students here at the Relationship School. If you want to change your life like they did, go to relationshipschool.com forward slash relationship mastery. And we'll see you in there. I, you two, you two have always seemed secure functioning to me. I mean, I don't live with you, so I, I you know, no, but you've always, you've always presented that way to me. Yeah, um, I mean, I think we, I don't know, I early think on, we, I don't think we were. our early, our dating years, like we had like four years of dating that were very mm -hmm. off on push pull, and it wasn't until we got engaged, like we we worked through a lot, basically went to therapy, you know, lots of stuff, but. It was when we got engaged that we were just both two feet in. And, and I think we started really like when I look back, I'm like, we were, we knew we had to take good care of each other and advocate for ourselves and make yeah. sure things worked for both of us and felt equitable. Like, I think we just, we knew what to do at that point, but we didn't know what to yeah. do a minute before that point. Two, only two feet in? You guys have four feet. Four feet in. Yeah. Four feet okay. in. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, I stopped That's looking for the exits too, which was yeah. the four feet in thing that yeah. completely changed my world. Yeah. And, and I started just kind of taking a stand for what I really wanted instead of being like, well, I don't know, I could make this work or I could make it. Is that how you want things to be? Like, I'm, I'm, I'm flexible. You know, I, we sort of had burned, we burned through so much. And so we got married, engaged in a really like sober, mature place, which yeah. I think a lot of people get engaged and married in infatuation, which I don't even know that we, we had like maybe one week of infatuation. It was very yeah. short. Sure I, I didn't have that with, I didn't have that with Tracy either. I, I, had, a, I had it when we were in junior high and high school. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I love that. Yeah. That's so but cute. Not, yeah, we yeah. just sort of met each other. We were both in grad school. We were just, it got serious, like, and, and almost, I want to say confrontational, but like we were, we were really navigating yeah. a lot from the beginning. And so I think we're more in, in, I wouldn't say infatuation. We don't get to have, I guess we never got to really fully have that, but we've had a lot of all the benefits of like really being, you know, mature adults developing something really amazing over time. So, and we've definitely needed help at yeah, times we and we, our ass off. Yeah. we've worked hard to make it good here. Jason, I wonder if you, you experienced what I've experienced. Um, I learned really strongly, both through my practice and deciding to specialize, but also committing to Tracy, that uh, that commitment is really for oneself, that um, what we commit to uh, is not because it's perfect, because nothing is, everything, everyone and everything is disappointing and annoying and irritating. Okay. But, um, but that it's our own discipline of putting ourselves fully into one thing that allows us to learn about ourselves. Yeah. I find that that committing to my perfectly imperfect mate, uh, which I am too, um, disciplines me to learn more about myself than anything else. Yeah. Had I not committed, I would I would still be as stupid as I was, and I'm probably still stupid. But but yeah. do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I do. The same really thing nice. with my yeah. And that's the real reason I think we commit is to as to become is to fill in that container, that person, that job, that career, um, our our full self, and mm -hmm. make it what we wish it to be. Yeah, I agreed. And I, I I was telling you this morning. I I just wanted to find out uh, more about myself and like what I'm capable of by committing. Yeah, you know, it was. Yeah, there were so many reasons, but. Um, it helped me the discipline, as you said. Mm -hmm. you know, and it's I, like, and I'm I, here. And, and I, I'm not, I'm just like really here. And I think it's, I want to find out. Yeah. And I, I would also say, and like it, just accepting that no one is like perfect. There is no perfect person. Yeah. We're not perfect. Like, like you got some. Yeah. I got sober to around you got, fantasies. Yeah. Around just like magical thinking and. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, that was, so there was a few shifts that happened, but I, I think for both of us that. Yeah, be, be investing so deeply in one person is really also us investing very deeply in ourselves. Like that totally, mm -hmm. totally resonates. I, I think secure functioning really is about growing up. And and also you can't you can't do secure functioning things without being able to grieve and without accepting loss. Um I found. Um uh you can't yeah. do it without allowing yourself to be in pain without striking out, yeah. without trying to get rid of it right away. Um, and so it's a, it's a tough thing to, to learn to do, but it's worth it if you actually want to become a better person and grow and learn um, oh, yeah. uh, uh, a relationship actually can do that for you, oh, but yeah. you have to start to see it through clear glasses. You do. That, right, yeah. Okay. And, and kind of set aside the entitlement. Yes. entitlement which is hard to do yeah, yeah. that's it the is. thing that's the thing about couples is they within a year they think they're family right which is a big mistake they're it not you're, you're strangers folks you're not family your kids are your family they're blood you're strangers constantly trying to get to know each other totally and you've dropped all the formalities uh, uh you know afforded to strangers that was not a good idea it's so true yeah it's so true interesting we're yeah. still we're still trying to get to know each other 
Totally. Like our, we're constantly learning about each other. So it's fun. It's if you get into it, it's fun. It's cool. It it's is, interesting. It is oh, it's it the greatest is, adventure. It's such a ever. cool process. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I love what you're doing, Stan, and how you're the way you're helping couples, the way it's just. I, I just really want to recommend people like, even if you just read the introduction, you'll get it. You're going to want to keep going, but just by the introduction, just by the introduction. It's like, if you just, if I just, I'm like, gosh, if a couple just applied the first 20 pages to their relationship, they would be like mm. sailing so beautifully, you know, just from that. So I, I feel like you really honed in on a piece of your work. Um, and the other books really round out where this comes from. I think you, you do say that, that like, you know, the other books provide more background and more, you know, for the person who really wants to go more in depth, but this alone is, um, gosh, anyone could, could, anyone could, could relate to this and get something out of it. So, so it's called in In each each other's other's care, care. a guide to the most common relationship conflicts and how to work through them. Stan Tekken. Yeah. Um, Stan, before we wrap up, uh, I've asked you this before, but you know, things are different. Uh, yes. We want to, we want to, you know, I want to, we want to help young people, you know, get access to relationship tools. And so the question I always ask is if you were speaking in front of a thousand high school students, that's how I changed it because yeah. of Daniel Mott's yeah, comment good. challenge to me. Uh, if you were speaking in front of a thousand high school students and you could only teach them one thing about love and relationships, what would you say to them? Love relationships, love, romantic love infatuation nature gets you into the relationship it does not keep you in one nature doesn't care about love it doesn't care about relationship it only cares about continuation of the species so if you really want to sustain a relationship the love is great that's groovy it's going to come and go relationships have to be based on terms and conditions deal or no deal or they cannot last. And the sooner you learn that, the happier you will be. Amazing. <laughs> so true. Stan, where can people find out about you and your work and this book? Uh, at thepactinstitute.com, um, the P-A-C-T uh, institute.com. And there, if you're a clinician or uh, you know somebody in the mental health field and you want to be trained, um, we teach all over the world through Zoom. Uh, and if you are interested in a couple workshop um, or a couple retreat, we're doing one in, in Portugal next year. That was fun. Great. Uh, you can also find that uh, just like the two of you, Tracy and I do those, uh, you know, continually and uh, highly, highly recommend. Yeah. Awesome. So, yeah. Love that. Love that you guys offer yeah. all, so many, so many ways for people to accept, uh, have access to your work. And the two of you are such a gorgeous couple and and generative you the two of you are doing also amazing things i really admire jason what you built uh what the two of you have built and uh and uh and continue to uh, to be impressed by your work mm, thank you Thanks, so much man. dan that means a lot yeah all right man we'll see you uh when we see you hopefully we'll get uh get another date in at some point in yeah Boulder. Boulder yes or L- LA, la or maybe. something yeah. else all right. Cool. Uh, Say hi to Tracy. Wow. Both of you. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Will Dan. You- if you live in the United States and you want to receive text messages from me about my personal life or little daily reminders, uh, you can do that now. It's so cool. And you just need to text the number 720-704-4852, or you can go to my.community.com forward slash Jason Gaddis. And that way you can sign up for text. And if you just text me podcast, um, I know you came from the podcast and I will be sending you text messages. You can always stop at any time just by typing in STOP. All right. Um, yeah, I look forward to uh, connecting with you on your phone, folks. <laughs>